Let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 22 to 26. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the sixth week in ordinary time. St. Mark writes, They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spat on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Do not go into the village. That's from Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. What does it suggest to us? Well, it suggests the different ways in which God acts. Why do I say that? Imagine that scene in the Gospel not the one we've just heard in the passage, but that other scene in which our Lord is approaching the town of Nain, and many are accompanying him. As he draws near, out from the town there comes a funeral procession. At a glance, our Lord sees what has happened. There on the funeral bier is being carried the body of a young man. His features show he has died in the prime of life. Closely accompanying him is his widowed mother, absolutely sunk in grief. Her husband has gone from this life, and now it is her son. She has nothing, and all she can do is trust in God. Our Lord's heart swells with compassion, and without a word being said to him, he moves towards the procession and with a sign of his hand, stops him. All look at him in wonderment as he leans slightly over the body and says, Young man, I say to you, arise. No one asked for this, and no one expected it. Instantly, incredibly, the young man's eyes open. He raises himself, leaning on one arm. He looks about and deftly swings his legs to sit up. Holding his hand, our Lord draws him from the funeral bier to his feet, and there the young man stands, brimming with health, looking at his astonished mother. Our Lord, smiling, presents him to her, pauses, and then moves on. That was a case in which our Lord acted without any request at all, and the benefit was instantaneous and immense. At times God answers our needs without being explicitly asked to do so. Let us turn to a different scene. People arrive, interceding with our Lord for the local centurion. His servant is gravely ill, they tell our Lord, and he is worthy of your help for he loves our people. I will come and see him, our Lord replies. We know the upshot, but the point here is that in this case, our Lord is responding to a prayer presented to him not by the person in need, but by others on his behalf. On another occasion, the blind man Bartimaeus vociferously calls to our Lord over the heads of the crowd and caught his attention. Once in Christ's presence, he asked for a miracle, which was immediately granted him. With his sight wondrously restored, he followed Jesus along the road. The point here is that there are a variety of ways in which the Lord is seen responding in mercy to human need. The normal way was simply to ask him. However, it was not always as simple as that, and in many cases, and, in any case rather, not every request received an instant answer given, the instant answer given to Bartimaeus. In fact, some requests 
were refused. Simon Peter made one request that touched our Lord's redemptive mission. He asked our Lord to cease all thought of suffering and dying. This must not happen to you, he said to Jesus, for you are the Messiah. This request received a powerful and public rebuff. Get behind me, Satan, was our Lord's response to his chief apostle. Another request made by James and John, two of his apostles, was also refused. They asked that they be granted places at our Lord's right and left in his kingdom. Our Lord's response? Such places, our Lord said, were for those allotted to them by my Father. He did not simply say, yes, they are yours. On another occasion, the man from the Decapolis region, who had been delivered by our Lord from a terrible case of possession, begged our Lord to let him follow him. This request was refused. No, you are to go back to your people and tell them of the good things God has done for you. And this the man obediently did. Why was there this difference in responding to requests and human need? We're not told. But we know it was because the Son of God made man judged it best. The man of the Decapolis became an early proclaimer of Jesus Christ to his own people, who were Gentiles, in our Lord's own lifetime. Simon Peter received the grace to follow our Lord in martyrdom, as did James and John. In our Gospel passage today from Mark chapter 8 verses 22 to 26, we have something different again. We read that, and I quote, They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Why did he not just heal the blind man with a touch and get on with it? We're not told. But there's more. When he had spat on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. Once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. This looks unnecessary, but not so. Christ knows best. If we think it will be pleasing to God that we ask him for something, then we ought to ask for it, and persistently. Our Lord tells us to ask and we shall receive. He says elsewhere that we ought to pray always and never lose heart. Our Gospel passage today surely shows us, among other things, that the ways of God are far above our ways, and that in His wisdom God may respond to our heartfelt prayer in ways that will test our faith. But this is to be expected because, unlike us, He is infinite in every way. God's holiness, His wisdom and His power are beyond our imagining. Let us trust him whatever life may bring, always praying for his help and grace, always thanking, always praising.